Welcome to my video on the A-level physics practical, the investigation into how the force on the current carrying wire is affected by flux density, length and current, also known as the F-build practical. So the setup is usually a yoke and we have magnets that are producing a magnetic field for our wire to experience. We're going to have a piece of copper wire going through like that and we're going to have that connected up to a circuit. We of course need an ammeter in there to record the current and if you'd want to change the current then you should have a variable resistor in there as well. This is going to be on top of a top pan balance. You want the balance to have the precision or resolution 0.01 grams. And we're going to attach our wire to the circuit using crocodile clips. And we do also want to clamp it in place so it doesn't move. If it does move, that can mess up the experiment and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now there are a few things that you can change. We can change the flux density, although that's very difficult. You need a Hall probe or something like that in order to find out what the flux density is. For that, you should ideally want a uniform magnetic field as well. Bar magnets don't produce that. So we're not going to change that. We're going to keep that constant. And we do that by using the same magnets. But there's also something else as well. Because the field isn't really that uniform in between the magnets, if the wire moves a little bit up or down or left or right or whatever, then it is going to experience a different flux density. And so in order to keep the flux density that the wire is experiencing the same, we want to use the same magnets, but also keep wire in the same position. So what do we want to change? Well, we could change the length by moving the crocodile clips up and down the wire and then measuring the distance in between the crocodile clips. We could do that, but the easiest thing is to change the current. So we're going to say that our independent variable is the current. Dependent, well, it's the reading on our balance, but it's not actually a real mass, is it? It's a simulated mass. And so therefore we can say the mass recorded by the balance and therefore that allows us to find out the force. So because we're going to be changing current, we're going to keep the length the same. So we're going to use all this stuff. What kind of wire are we going to choose? We're going to use thick copper wire. Let's go for about a millimeter thick. So we have a low resistance and that therefore allows for higher currents. If we have higher currents, then well, bigger numbers means that our uncertainty is going to be lower. So that's a good thing. We also use a thick copper wire because it's not going to flex. If this is a thin piece of copper wire and you turned it on, the wire would flex a little bit, it would bow. It means that that is ultimately going to change the length and it's going to experience a different flux density as well if it moves. We're also going to ensure that now when it comes to the length of the wire, it's a bit tricky because the magnetic field is not going to be perfectly confined to the length of the magnets. There is going to be a little bit of field coming out like that. And so we could measure the length of the magnets and then say, well, that's also the length of the wire that's experienced the magnetic field. But the problem with that is that's not quite true. It's a good idea to put your crocodile clips on the wire where it leaves the edge of the magnets. If we do that, then we can measure the length of the magnets. Uh, we can do that with a vernier caliper. So we can just get our jaws and put them on the end of the magnet and that can be our length. Brilliant. And before we turn it on, we're going to place the yoke, that's the cradle on the balance and zero it or tear it. So what we're going to do then, we're going to send, let's say 0 0.5 amps through the wire and record reading on balance. Now it doesn't really matter what increments you use and the maximum, however just be aware that high currents can be hazardous, can cause electric shocks, therefore do not touch equipment while current is flowing. Honestly you still should be okay because if the current wants to go down the wire rather than you, so you might get a shock, you might not, but better safe than sorry. And uh, we're going to do say five different currents let's say up to 2.5 amps or something like that, but you could do 0.2 up to one, it's up to you. Now you could do repeats, you could do it three times. However, nothing's going to be changing in between. Let's put it this way, repeat reading should be done if there is a random error. But with this setup, there should be no random error because it's just the equipment. It's nothing to do with you. Ideally, you want a positive reading on here. You want the force on the wire to be upwards, which then pushes the yoke and the balance downwards. However, if you do get a minus number, then that just means that the wire is pushing down. So that means that the wire is pulling the yoke up. And so it's getting rid of some of that mass, as it were, on the balance. So we're then going to draw a graph and you could put force against current, but as per usual, because force is calculated from mg here, we can just put m against i. 
and we get a nice straight line. So if mg is b i l, then that means that m divided by i, which is our gradient, is going to be equal to b l over g. And from that, we can actually calculate a value for the flux density in between our magnets. And you can check it with a Hall probe or something like that if you want to. If this was an exam though, you'd probably have force on here instead. So just be aware of that. And so we're just getting rid of the whole G thing there. Now, some exam boards have a weird obsession with the idea of DC rippling. Your power comes from the mains, which is AC. It gets rectified to DC and it tries to smooth it out as best as possible, but your DC is always going to look a little bit lumpy like that. It's never going to be perfectly straight. But the thing is, is that if this is happening for the current, then it's happening for the force as well. So it's a little bit redundant if you ask me. Maybe it's worth mentioning, but there's nothing you can do about it. You can't do anything quantitative with it. Now there is going to be uncertainty due to the resolution. Chances are they're going to be 0.01 grams and 0.01 amps. But the best thing to do is go for the one that has the biggest percentage uncertainty. So let's say that my ammeter goes to 0.01 amps. And so the resolution is the same as it were for both of these, for my ammeter and my balance. However, chances are that your balance is going to end up with smaller numbers. And so, and so the percentage uncertainty in your readings for the mass is going to be greater than the percentage uncertainty in your currents. So I would go for mass. You're going to draw error bars. You're going to do a line of worst fits. And so we can say in the end, percentage uncertainty in B, if we're calculating, Flux density is going to be equal to percentage uncertainty in the gradient. That's line of worst fit, take away line of best fit, divided by line of best fit times 100. And we're going to add that to any percentage uncertainty in the length, depending on how you measured it. It's probably not going to be much, so you don't really have to mention that. You can just say that it's negligible. And that's it. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, leave a like, hit that bell button if you want to see when I release a new video. And if you want to see me doing this in real life, then click on the card and it'll take you to the video I made for Marsbury Science. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, put them down below. Always appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time.